and we are live. Welcome to Near Nirvana. This is episode 76 of Long Story Short. So, man, I feel like we're reaching milestones, right? We're inching away to episode 100. Uh Yeah, I was thinking about that the other day. Like, 100, if we get there, big if, if we get there, what do we do? We got to do something, man. I I mean, how do we top, like, Stein getting on the show? I I guess we could top it. Yeah, I I guess we could top it by getting uh, DeVoe on the show. Or DeVoe and Stein? DeVoe and Stein. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> get them both on the show. Maybe get McClay on here with us. Just no, fill, up the, fill it up, man. Oh, we could do like a double episode again, too. Double feature, where it's like, instead of an hour, it's like two hours. It's extravaganza. So we can just have people rotating in and out throughout the show. And we do a couple of giveaways and stuff. Yeah, it's gonna come. It's gonna come up quick, right? Well, I guess that's we're still talking about almost half a year if we hit every week. So, yeah, like um, what, twenty-four episodes away. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> well, well, we'll have to, we'll have to, we'll have to plan something out for that one. Yeah, it, it'll inch away before we do it. Big if you know, we'll, we'll, you know, the other one, Bruce. That's a good point. Like, you know, we've been talking about getting Jen on the show, so maybe it's Devoe, Stein. Oh, yeah. Jen finally get her on. I I mean per contract, you know that that we we all had meetings before we started the show <laughs> and agreements. Someone from 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 one of the other uh, shows throughout the channel is supposed to sh- be a guest every week. Technically, <laughs> it'll happen one day. You know, <laughs> I mean Real we started well. out really strong with that, but yeah. Uh, that that was that was the original uh, intent, but I think scheduling uh, got in the way. So yeah, there yeah. were a lot more people on at the beginning, right? Yeah, like it. I think it actually rotated every single week, where it was like it was like Laura one week, then Lucy, um, Sarah even joined us, and then it kept on rotating for a while, and then I think it got up to Jen's turn, and then it just stopped. <laughs> They're yeah. all like, don't make me go on that damn show, please. Don't make me go. <laughs> so now it's down to the scatastic four. Yes, <laughs> oh, yeah, because I mean, we, we had other members of the crew. I mean, they're still in the Instagram and stuff like that, and they participate in the chat, and then you know, life gets in, in the way. So, uh, Does but they join ever? us from time to time. So, <clears throat> all right, but, well. Uh... Big shout out to our sponsors over at uh, Cover Price. So speaking of DeVoe, right? So make sure you're using the code uh, Nirvana14 for a 30-day unlimited membership for only 99 cents. Why okay, go check them out. They just did a huge revamp of the site. It's fly as hell. So uh, go check out Cover Price if you, ha- if you haven't been there a little bit. Mm-hmm. All right. Use your work email. You know, hint. <laughs> Uh, but you can you can also use the code Nirvana over at our other sponsors with Bird City Comics. So it, it seems like every week they keep on dropping fire, you know, fire fire books. So we'll see we'll see if their streak continues of just doing awesome this year. Um, which they should have won that award to that Image was offering for the uh, retailer of the year, right? Hey, Bubba McGurkey. Thank- Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Those uh, those McNiven um, uh, two dollar pickups. Uh, yeah, I, I was pleased with those. Thank you. All right, eBay is loaded for Chad Cave. Let's do this, right? All right. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. We're ready. all right, for all you rule breakers out there. Um, yeah, I was even bringing on your hunt. Point. But if you, if you're hell bent on going to eBay to buy these at inflated prices. We're not going to be the ones to stop you at this point. You're on your own. So, uh, typey, typey, typey. <laughs> what are you doing? 
Here we go. All right, this is my favorite game to play. Is this or is this not a Planet Comics number one homage by Dave Stevens? Ah, now, shit. two girls on a snowmobile with a gun. <laughs> you let me know. I'm going to say yes, but I see, you know, this is like a Rorschach test for me. I, I see it everywhere, this, that homage. Um, but, um, but yeah, this book just came out this week. Okay. It's actually, oh, it's it just actually came out. Hard, hard to get hands on this one. Just came out this week. Um, most of the stores are sold out. Um, not many on eBay. Um, but um, yeah, just uh, just the book that caught my eye. We, we don't usually talk about new releases on this show, but uh, you know what? We break the rules all the time. Ooh, Vaughn's already on the board. I mean, I broke the rules. I I, I bought it before the show started. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't shit, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not counting mine on the board. <laughs> if I had if I had FOC it and everything, that'd been like, oh yeah, mine are coming in from blah blah blah. <laughs> I should have asked you because you because you had mentioned it before the show started. I should have asked like, oh, which book are you talking about? Because oh, I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I because I, I saw this book this week, but I and I saw that it had come out, um, and I saw that it had come out this week, mm. but um, I wasn't sure if uh, if you were gonna recommend this or not, Ben, just because it was, yeah, no, out. I just uh, I couldn't help myself. No, it's, it says it's a limited edition. Limited to what? I don't know. Oh, sorry, it's winter edition. Sorry, my, my eyes are going. I take that back. It's just a winter edition. Oh. No no limited, just winter. Open order, as many as you want. That said, I can't imagine people were backing up a truck on this book. But is it really just a homage of a homage, where it's homaging dirty pair? <laughs> the Adam Hughes? <laughs> That's the Adam Hughes homage of... I a hundred percent think it is a, a, a call out to plan a comics one, but I'm happy to be told I'm wrong. Hey, Aaron, how many copies did you get? I bought two. You bought two. Mm. Yeah. Do you want the link? I, yes. I, no, I, I'm I'm on it right now. I'm kind of like, do I, do I really feel like getting this or not? Uh, <laughs> how much is it? It's like 13 uh, bucks, 13 what? bucks. And, and then it's like seven bucks for shipping. I'll put it in the private chat. You 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 decide. <laughs> I don't know if I can share out the link in in the in the main chat. I think you can. I think I've seen people do it before, but let's find um, out. I'll, I'll I'll give my panel like a couple more minutes to decide. I'll wait uh, for it. It's like I'll wait for it to like get hot, and then I'll scramble for it. <laughs> you know what I mean? that's how that's the that's the that's the dangerous game that i play sometimes so, so it, it it is a ten dollar cover price book oh really yeah uh, if that helps if that sways you any uh, <laughs> but anyways I'll, I'll 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 put the link in the chat like after the where i bought it from i'm not saying that you have to buy it from there or anything like that i'm not getting any commission or whatever it's just like where i got it but i'll let y'all decide james Crider makes a good point he says two girls one bike will get you demonetized i think that's fair i think that's mm. fair all right carter and i were talking about this book earlier in the week alley oop number 17 uh, this is an alex schomberg cover i text i, I had a shot at this book I did not pull the trigger. Senator Carter said, fill or kill. And he just told me he loved it. Yeah. Uh, it's weird nine, as hell, two, though, you know. <laughs> a 9-2 sold for seven thirty eight in 2020. That seems criminally cheap. I got a shot at a 9-2 of this book for that price. I'd be all over it. Only 11 copies on the census of this bad boy. What hmm. do we think? I'm I think not, it's cool. Is this a monkey man? Oh, what's going yeah, on with this guy, though? He, he he looks that way in all of it. So if you look at this series, 
he's drawn that way. I don't know. I don't know if he's just a dude with like some serious chops or what his deal is. <laughs> but he's, uh, he's hung over from uh, from St. Patty's Day. I mean, why else would he be in his boxers in a top green top hat? <laughs> Just saying. With a yeah, green top hat? That's a fair point. Mm. Yeah. He just needs a pot of gold, right? Yeah, that's Lucky Charms' dad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and one of those lucky ladies might be his his mom. <laughs> or they could be both his moms. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. He did he did have red hair, right? Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> All oh, right. Wow. Astonishing X-Men number one. This is a store exclusive. We're not afraid about talking about store exclusives on the show. Um, but this is a Mark Brooks retailer exclusive. Um uh just going this book. It sells for a lot, right? This book, this book is not cheap to get. Um, uh, there are 260 virgin copies on the census. Uh, most of those are 9.8, and similar for the trade. There's a trade version of this um, with the X-Men logo on it. 348, over 300 of those are in 9.8. But uh, but it's a beautiful Mark Brooks cover and a store exclusive that sells for a very hefty premium. I mean, Raws are easily 150 bucks on this book. Um, uh, when did this book come out? This was 2017. Really? It's that. Yeah, it's the 2017 Astonishing X-Men run. Damn, I, I'd never seen this before. Or at least I'd never noticed it. Hmm. It, it started jumping up in price recently, right? Or is it always historically gone? I mean, it's done already. I mean, I think this is one of those that came out, and and it's done by a store that doesn't do well. You don't hear about it a lot. I, I actually, I don't know how many they do, but it's not a store that you hear about regularly. Yeah, um, yeah, because I heard Comic Sketch Art had a bunch for a while, or something like that. But I don't know how true that is. I, yeah, I don't like that. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you you see them on eBay listed for for a fairly hefty amount. Uh, someone has a trade in the chat. So is that half a point? <laughs> I'll give you the point on that one. I mean, I, I just put up the version because that's the picture I had. So wasn't wasn't picking one or the other. Just needed to put some picture up there. So. Okay, it's been expensive for years. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. This is one that's kind of flown under the radar a little bit, I guess. So this is an Ed McGinnis one in twenty-five for Wolverine Annual Number One from twenty fourteen. Um, this book just doesn't sell. A nine eight sold back. In 2014, we're talking a decade ago at this point, basically, for 50 bucks, only four copies on the census. I must be wrong because I can't it can't be zero or four if there was a nine eight that sold, unless I, unless that wasn't a nine eight, and it could have been a nine six. I could have fucked that up. Hmm. I'll double check it real quick. Bear with me. Damn, I could have swore I I have seen this cover before, and like I did pass it up just because it didn't sell for anything. Mm. It just hasn't sold at all recently. Could it be? Is it one of those situations since it's a it's an annual one in twenty five? No one ordered twenty five copies. I think that's a big part of it, Aaron. One hundred percent. Because yeah, because there's been so many times where. I had to ask for the annual instead of it already is being like in my pool box. Yeah, sorry. So it's it's four of four. So they all four nine point eight. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think I would grab this at the right price um, if I saw it. But um, I I wonder if these are guesses for how many nine eights on the census. No, I'm just joking. 
Um, but yeah, I uh, I don't know. I kind of dig this for some reason. I don't know what it is about it. All right, right. Well, let's, yeah. we can keep the show keep the show rolling. The Mighty Thor number ten, a Venomized variant. Uh, Gerard Perel, one in fifty. He is one of my favorite artists. I think he is criminally underappreciated. Um, this isn't necessarily his best work. Um, but this book um, goes for more than a little bit. Sold for three fifty um, last year. Seventy two in the census. Only twenty six and nine point eight. So a tougher nine point eight for a modern. Did you ever come across this one, Carter? I figured this would be on your hunt list. If I found this book, <laughs> you would know. <laughs> you would. You would have already known. <laughs> Dude, that's badass. Well, he yeah. obviously didn't miss leg day, is all I'm saying. I've <laughs> yeah, I have a lit the my want list is um it, it will this book and a lot of those venom variants are on my want list, so yeah, I've kept my out my eye my eye out for this one for years without without a snap of it really, so People ask a lot for it, too. They ask a lot for this book. Oh, go blind Adam. He's one for five right now. Nice. All right. This 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 book is kind of uh, <clears throat> kind of obscure. Uh, Street Fighter uh, 22 Swimsuit Special. This is a Derek Chu variant. Um, I... Not gonna lie, I've been I've just been a huge Chu fan over the last year and a half, two years. Um, this, you know, these Street Fighter comics. I mean, the collectors are rabid. I wish Rob was on tonight because he could probably tell us a little bit more about this one. Um, but um, but this one, a lot of the the database sites don't even have this book listed. Um, there, are, this thing, you know, sixty for sixty and nine point eight on the census, which I thought was interesting. Uh, a, a good chunk of those are signature series, um, but this people ask a lot for this book, and it's weird. Like I said, I, I don't think cover price has this. Um, when you pull up this issue, it's not there. Um, it's um, it's kind of an interesting one. It's it's, it's fallen through the cracks for every reason. And this is obviously Cami um, from Street Fighter, but uh, I don't know if it's the baseball hat or what it is, but something about this cover works for me. Yeah, I, I just looked it up on eBay. I was like, kind of like, no, I'm good. Like, I like the cover, but I'm not paying the price that people are. What asking. are they at? What is it, like a hundred bucks raw, probably something like that. Chun Li split with Cami. Oh, oh, so okay. it's like four hundred copies. Like the other, is it like a connecting cover where Ch Chun Li's the other side, or is it like kind of like the same kind of pose, and it's Chun Li instead of Cami? Alrighty. It has a 3D uh, vibe to it. He just said yes. I'm assuming something I said was correct in that <laughs> that question I asked. <laughs> I think it's you said it was split with Chun Li. I think is what you're saying. So I think, oh. I think I think that's what he was saying. Yes, too. I'm not I'm not sure, but uh, I, I kind of like how like the dude in the background, uh, he's blurred out, like you can't really see him. He's out of focus. I don't know. Something about this is cool. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. just not caught that. He's like, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, pay for it, ye. Uh, you know, if people sent more super chat money, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This was uh, that's a ghost mission from our friend Bruce. Um, Modern Warfare Two Ghost Number One. A Federico Dallocino one in ten variant, a nine eight sold for this just this month mm. for one hundred and fifty bucks. Mm. Only eleven of these on the census, uh, nine and nine point eight. And uh, thank you for the submission, Bruce. Much appreciated, buddy. You know this is a McClay book, right? <laughs> <laughs> it, it looks like it would be. It looks like it would be. 
So it's kind of interesting. Um, in the storyline of Modern Warfare, there's a character, his name is Ghost, if you didn't know. So I, I, I don't think- know much more than that than other than playing the game every so often. These books seem to go for, all of these books seem to go for a little bit, but I think Jim Lee did the cover B on this book, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. I think it was a, uh, I think it was a 1 in 50. A 1 in 50, really? I believe, either a 1 in 25 or a 1 in 50. Okay. And that one is uh, relatively expensive. Yeah, I would imagine, for sure. Hey, Tony, what's up, brother? Good to see you, man. Hope all's well. How's it going, Tony? Okay. Yeah, this is um, definitely one to get if you're out there digging. Um, cool book. <laughs> I would highlight Blind Adam's comment, but I, I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> 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 All right. This is Carter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about it. I just saw the image. I was like, ah, here you go. Uh, the grind, the grindhouse. Oh, doors open at midnight. Now, I didn't even know Grindhouse even had comics. Yeah, like, there were comics based on Grindhouse. You know what I mean? I, and, I have a few. Yeah, and I was digging. Actually, I was digging in the um at the comic book store today, and I came across some Grindhouse comics, but. Um, the covers weren't as good as this one, though. I will say. No, this this is really good. This is by Coop. Uh, I think his name is Chris Cooper. Is his real mm-hmm. name? He's um, I think he's from Philadelphia. He does a lot of punk rock mm-hmm. um, posters uh, for bands, and um, um, and so you know he's he's quite famous for that. So he's done a few comic book covers. So this this is a badass one. Um, a really, really good cover um, by him, but he's got a pretty big following um, in terms of art. And comics aren't his his genre, even though like his punk posters are like a comic vibe. Um, but he has done some comic work, so um, yeah, this is a this is a really cool book. See, I knew you'd find more info on it than I would. Yeah, no, because there was a book. Uh, if you go to the next one. Um, TJ Timebomb, he was on with, oh. um, um, he was on, uh, you know, TJ, right, Kerr? Um, he, he's, he's from Ohio, I'm pretty sure, uh, is where, um, but he was on Flipside a little bit with us. Yeah. And he had said, hey, he's, you should throw this book. This is an, a coupe cover as well, a, a Magdalena Vampy cover. Um, you can see a signature down there. He said, hey, throw this on the show sometime. So, I've been meaning to put it on, and then when you drop that book, I'm like, you know what? We can dovetail these two together. We can, we can, mer- we can yeah. bring them together. Nice. Nice. I haven't heard from TJ in a while. Oh, is it? Yeah, he, he, he hits me up quite a bit on, on IG. We, we we bullshit about different shit now and then. But uh, if you're watching TJ, um, hope all is well, buddy. Yep. Um, Big shout out. And, uh, and Vampy is, um, you know, she, She's uh, curvy on this one. Sam. Very. <laughs> it, it was very surprising to see this cover. <laughs> when I, was going, I was like, is that a Vampirilla cover? <laughs> yeah, Vampirilla's yeah. mom, dude. <laughs> she, she looks she looks Sass, fertile. Sasparilla. <laughs> Sasparilla. <laughs> there's a reason there's a drink named after her. All right. I used to act like you had that body. <laughs> It doesn't last, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, all right. Um, Amazing Spider-Man number 692. Uh, I've always liked, I don't know, there's something about this cover has always really hit hard for me. Um, so this is a variant by Marcos Martin. It's an, they For this issue, they did <coughs> a series of... Um, covers through the decade 60s 70s 80s 90s 2000s i believe and uh this is the best of the bunch for me um although some of them are also quite cool um but uh the death of gwen stacy here the all red cover um i don't know there's just something about this book that's always hit well and it sells you know this was not a ratio um this sells reasonably well a 9.8 sold for 206 bucks earlier this year 
233 on the census, uh, 125 of those with 9.8. The all red cover makes it a little tricky to get a super high grade on, but um, yeah, a really sharp book uh, for my money. El Crider, if you only have a 9.4, it doesn't count. It's 9.8 or bust, man. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never see these books out in the wild. Like, I don't think I've ever ran into one, like, to be completely honest. Yeah, it's weird, right? You don't, you don't, you don't see them, right? And they, I and mean, I, you, you always find that chunk of the run. Of I don't know if they were qualifiers or not, um, but they, they definitely weren't ratios. You know, whenever I think about the death of Gwen Stacy, I always think about the, um, the juxtaposition, like in the comics, when Gwen Stacy's dad knows that Peter Parker is Spider Man, says, "Oh, look after Gwen," but in the movie, in the movie version. Uh, Dennis Leary is like, stay away from my daughter <laughs> right before he dies. <laughs> yeah. But is that just, just to update the humor of today's time period now? Uh, probably. Well, it's, it wasn't even supposed to be funny. It was just like, yeah, keep away because you're going to fucking get her killed. <laughs> and I know it. And then he just. And he wasn't wrong, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A prophecy fulfilled. No, you, I mean, you show that picture is probably one of the most important seminal moments in Spider-Man's history, man. You know, it's like, um, I'm, I'm, a lot of characters have origin stories and, and big events in their, in their, in their storyline. But this one, this one is huge. I mean, it's, it's up there. Yeah. Big time. I mean, um, <laughs> that story hit. Hit like a fist still does if you if you reread it but uh yeah this book this book just i don't know it just seems to work yeah is spider gwen in the actual 616 marvel universe or is she yeah. still is in it, like a different well, timeline or well spider gwen like she jumped back she jumps between the two of them yeah mm. she, oh, she yeah. was doing that in the actual comic run too oh yeah like, That's cheap. But, yeah. Is, is there a Mexican variant of this with Quinn Rising? I'm telling you, that's. <laughs> you got a fat ass, too. <laughs> Josh will find it really cheap and sell it for five times the price. <laughs> All right. Shout out to my uh, my, my, my friends at the Hall of Comics. Uh, I grabbed this from one of their sales. Uh, recently, um, uh, Savage Dragon number 51. Um, this is an Eric Larson cover A. Just a cool looking cover. Yeah. I mean, I don't love Eric Larson, um, at least his writing. His, his art his art is pretty decent a lot of the times, but um, this is a really cool book. Um, I've been grabbing a lot of Savage Dragon lately when I'm out digging, but when I find it cheap, um, you know, the print runs in these books are, some of them are ridiculously low. And, you know, it's been running almost as long as Spawn. It just strikes me as a book that some people may circle back on someday and try to complete it. And there's just not a lot of them. Um, but this is a this is a kind of a badass looking cover. Uh, only 19 of these on the census. Now, when I say 19, if you know this book... Um, there's two versions of it, and that 19 includes both versions. So if you go to the next slide, Aaron, if you don't mind, um, there's this pink trade dress version, which, you know, they do a lot with the Savage Dragon titles. I don't know what the first one, I don't think this was the first book to do it, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But they've kept that going for a while. Oh, um, where Image changes the uh, Where they the trade change dress. the trade, you can just get cover A or cover B, and it's just a, the, the, the pink versus the yellow trade dress. They'll do that with second prints now too, at more recently is what I've seen. Where if they reuse the cover, um, I've seen it before where they use the modern trade and then they'll do a yes, like a nineties turbo. Too. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of games that they play, so um, they they both go for similar prices. A copy of this hasn't sold since 2019. It's for 50 bucks, but regardless, there's not a lot of copies of of this book on the census in either version. Um, and, uh, yeah, just kind of a cool looking book. All right. 
while we're at the halfway point with us and we have 83 watching live of us so oh yeah that's right we gotta give this book away yeah so i am so sorry again for not being here last week but uh if you want to show the book again uh Ben is giving this away so all you had to do is comment on the march 7th show so not last week but the weeks before uh i've already added the names before the show uh i'm not gonna add any more so sorry if you try doing that while we're live but good luck everyone oh i i keep on forgetting to change it from heart attack setting so it's gonna it's gonna spin for like a minute yeah but it's always fun to watch it when it spins that hard and then as it's slowing down to select a name, you think it's going to be one name, it ends up being someone else's. <laughs> I Yeah, my band is selling out now, so, you know. Oh. Oh, oh Patrick. Oh, man. Patrick Mel. Damn. Uh, Patrick, wow! Hit me up, hit me up on IG with your with your deets, and I'll and I'll get this out to you. Congratulations! I bet. What's his name? This is fucking bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the name that was like right underneath it. Yeah. Who was that? I'm not even gonna say. <laughs> yeah, it's better just to let sleeping dogs yeah. lie, but. Uh, right. Yeah, when I go digging now and I come across the Savage, Dra Savage Dragon books, um, I'll grab them cheap, and there's a handful of them that I look for, mm -hmm. um, you know, from that run. So, uh, yeah, this this one this one this one isn't bad. You you know, has it has it surprised you after all these years they haven't even attempted a like an animated cartoon like, or have they? I uh, did they do didn't a Savage they try Dragon? Try one at one point. I could have swore. Like would it be would it have been around the same time period of like Spawn being on HBO? That... Could it have been? Okay, wasn't there a Wildcats cartoon at I'm... one point? Yeah, there was an animated Wildcats because okay. there's a com. Yeah, because there's action figures, and I got one. And of there's that comic part. line that 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 followed it. Mm -hmm. I know there's Savage Dragon, uh, like that. That she dragon, I I could have sworn they made a figure oh, of her. Here we go. Liger knows they did have a cartoon. They did have a cartoon. Yeah, you know. he, one season or what? Uh, and then Tony is saying yes to Wildcats. Was he saying they did it? Was he saying that the she dragon? Uh, I think he was saying that to Wildcats. A Wildcats and a Savage okay, Dragon, okay, I believe. Okay. I will verify that. What is Google search? Good old fashioned Google. <laughs> There, uh, yeah, you can actually watch the episode and epi the first episode. Was it just a it, pilot that never got picked up, or was it actually a... from 1995 to 1996 on the USA Network animated it? Wow, I don't know how I missed that 95 to 96. Okay, Two I was in college and I wasn't so into comics at that point in my life. Wow. Okay, fair Two enough. seasons. Two seasons. Two seasons. Man, I'm gonna fucking watch that shit, dude. I don't remember. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, I someone has the first episode on so, the Daily Motion hmm. where you can watch it. All right, I'm not gonna okay. watch it. Cool, cool. No. <laughs> All right. All right, this is kind of a big book. Uh, Masters of the Universe, number six. This was a He-Man.org edition, so I believe it was only available from the website. Limited to 500 copies. Uh, a 9.8 sold last year for 700 bucks, which is a, which is quite a bit. And only 10 of these on the census. Um. So I always say this, right? Um, and people laugh at me, but uh, books that are limited to 400, 500, if they're store exclusives, or whatever, eventually these books are going to be wanted, I think. Not all of them, but some of them, a select few of them are going to be wanted and they're going to hit crazy prices. So 
Um, you know, 500 in the grand scheme of the hobby is really not anything at all. It's a drop. It's 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 a drop in the bucket. So um, yeah, um, yeah. This is uh, this is a big one for the, for the He Man fans. I wonder if Leg has this one. I bet he does. Yeah, man. You know what? This is the type of book that if he did, we would know. You don't think he's? I just feel like he surprises me sometimes with the yeah. shipping. Yeah. But I shit, man. I I know I've never seen this. I didn't know anything about it. Yeah, this is, and it's weird. It's an issue number six that they're doing this on, right? It's... Mm-hmm. Good looking book. Yeah, yeah, and it and it goes for and it goes it goes for a lot. Oh damn! Okay. If you don't have a Carter, leg doesn't have. It, I don't know who the hell would have it. McClay, does he have one? Maybe. Well, you got to think anytime a big He-Man book drops or something like that, people are hitting up leg, you know, because they know he's a huge collector. So that's always an advantage. Like if there's a Campbell book, people are always messaging me, which is pretty freaking awesome. Oh, that's cool. People are just sending you links. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. The community is good that way. Like, you know, um, when, you know, people come across, you know, Jeff to call books, they're like, hey, man, Mm -hmm. you got this one. So. Everybody's looking out for each other. Right? Hey, That's did you why. get that album, dude? Did you oh, buy dude. that album? No, dude. Uh, don't say shit. Don't say anything about that. I'm gonna go pull the. I was meant to pull the trigger on that, bro. And for whatever reason, it wouldn't take my payment, so I got to figure. Bro, that out. I was gonna, I was gonna buy it for you, and I was like, "What do you want to do?" And you go, "I got it." I go pull the trigger. I go pull. Yeah, remind me about that shit. All right, dude. That's a rare, rare album, dude. All right, we, we digress, right. but uh, um, here's <laughs> one for you, Joe. Uh, Gen oh, 13, hell. number five. Um, this is the German Splitter edition. So, Splitter was a comic book shop in Germany, and they reprint, you know, they released the Gen 13 issues over there, most of them with the covers that we had here, but a couple issues didn't, and this is one of them. Um, wow. This is interior art, I'm pretty sure, from that issue, but uh, a really cool cover with Fairchild. God damn it. Mama. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is, it, uh, is this on eBay right now or no? Yes. You can find this on eBay. You can find this on eBay. God damn it. They want too much. Fuck that. Just ask if you a- look, you can find them for 30 bucks. No. Hit up, hit up Rob. He might. Oh, I mean, yeah. All right. That is cool. That's a good pose. Oh yeah, I got this one. This is a great cover, man. A tough one. This is a pandemic book, uh, March or April of 2020. Far sector number five. This is a Warren Lou uh, cover B. Uh, very under ordered. Um, tough, tough book to find. Just a good one to keep an eye open for when you're digging. Yeah, Far Sector, uh, I think uh, Campbell, not not J. Scott Campbell, um, the other one, <laughs> did a couple of badass covers. Yeah, yeah, for it's, the first for the first issue and yeah. a bunch of the other ones. So, is it Jamal Campbell? Jamal, Jamal Campbell. Campbell, yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a tricky one, and it go and it's people ask a lot for this raw, it's like fifty bucks. Um, but this is precisely the kind of book you can find digging. I know for a fact these are the ones that you know dealers have in long boxes and don't know a damn thing about. Mm. All right. All right. So Mr. Cool from Instagram, uh, thank you for the submission. Hit me up with this book. Say, hey, do you have any idea what's going on with this? I can't even find a picture of this. I was out digging, I came across it. I did some research. I couldn't find anything. So, chat, if you guys know anything, let me know. There were two covers for this that my comic shop had. Um, and then there's this one. Uh, this is from Nightstone Comics from 1999. We're guessing this is some kind of a cover C. Um, but it is literally um, nowhere to be found. Maybe Not like a even- video, video game convention or something like that where it was a promo. Or we can take, take away from the table or something like that. 
So That'd he opened nice. up and sold and showed me the uh, the indica and disha whatever you, however you say that. Yeah. And uh, there was no additional information really to be had from that. Um, but um, but yeah, just a book that he found in the wild that he cannot find anything online about. There are several of the B variants for oh. Yeah, so they started dropping really cool artists on the B variants, the rotating them. Um, um, you know, during that, during that time, like right around issue number five. So a hundred percent, Mike, um, there are some cool artists in there. I was thinking of dropping some other ones on there, but I didn't want to say anything about it because I wanted to go hunt them for myself. But, uh, oh. uh you let the cat out of the bag. So you're a hundred percent right. For the gin 13. Did we talk about gin 13 book? Yeah. Um, so oh, it was, this, uh, the camel. One? Yeah. Oh, it's a German. Uh, it's a yeah. yeah, so it's Fairchild in kind of a jungle attire. And by jungle attire, I mean basically not much of anything. She's kind of uh, squatting down. Is that a sword in her hand? And, um, yes. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, there's her a hair sun, is... There's a sun in the background that's hitting her elbow, basically. Yeah, and she's kind of squatting in the jungle. Um, but, um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's a very sharp looking cover. I believe when Splitter did these, if you look in that issue or an issue in this around this run, you know, this was taken from taken from internal art. And then uh and then James Kreider is saying that the far sector is Educure. Well, no, that's for number four. I, I saw the Educure. I was gonna maybe talk about that one. Uh, he's I think he's just pointing out that's another good one, a good cover B, if I'm not mistaken, James. And then her feet have the most clothes. That's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is true. Bind Adam, it's your type of book. If if that's what you're asking. <laughs> All right, this is Carter. Mm. Yeah, I found this digging. Um, so uh, this is Avengers versus X Men number six. Uh, this is a one in one hundred variant. And usually I could have swore I was up on my Scarlet Witch variants, but I guess not. And I thought I was up on AVX variants, and I guess not. Because I, <laughs> I I just didn't know this variant existed. I, I, as soon as I saw this, I was like, I never knew this existed. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, this is a badass cover. And, and it's funny. I kind of remember the black and white one. Mm -hmm. The one in, what's that, like a one in 200? But I don't. I ever remember seeing the color one for some reason. Hmm. I kind of remember the black and white one when I saw him. Like, yeah, you know, I've seen that, but this one has evaded me as well. Like, I always know when I'm looking at a variant for A versus X, like, you know, if they have like one character that's like black and white and the color, yeah. um, you know, different iterations of that. But I don't think I've ever seen this. Like, I always run into like, you know, whichever character black and white is one ratio but never mm -hmm. never i guess never something this high of a ratio yeah so i mean you know this book this was the you know one of the highest ordered books of the year it was 190,000 copies on this thing jeez so one in 100 would mean one percent so you're talking about maybe 2000 in the grand scheme of things that's not too many to be honest with you 2000 books um, and that's probably not even that many because a lot of stores are not going to order 100 copies of this even back then. Right. No. And this is in that 2000, this is a 2012. So that was also during that period where, you know, the tail end of that period where the Marvel ratios were, were all tougher to get. I don't think they were playing any games at that point in time. So, um, yeah, good find. Man hands. <laughs> Only 44 in the census, which is kind of surprising. Um, let's see. Justin Shannon, you know, no worries. They'll eventually make a foil virgin version. Mm hmm. So, you know, we can get rid of that annoying trade dress for you. Adam, you're welcome, man. Anytime. Uh, thanks for the support. On, uh, and thank you for watching the show. Um, yeah, real quick on this one. 225 is the high sale on this. Back in 2021, Teacher. most recent sale was in 2022 for 129. 
Ooh, so it's on the dip again. Mm. Like everything else, right. unless it's Dave Stevens. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, or speaking of Dave next. Stevens, uh, this is yeah. also from our friend Bruce. Um, so we talked about this book back in Flipside. I couldn't remember when. I told him originally, I think we talked about this, but we didn't. We talked about this back on Flipside. So this is Dave Stevens and Adam Hughes doing the cover together, which is obviously kind of cool. Um, Hughes did the reflection. Uh, Stevens did the rest. Um, uh, a nine eight sold for this book uh, back in twenty twenty three. You know, I take that back. I think one just sold this week, but when it, at the time of putting together this the slide, it was, um, and I think it was for over two hundred. The one that sold this week. Um, but anyways, nine eight back in twenty twenty three for two hundred bucks. Only thirty one on the census, which is not a lot. Um, and uh, twenty of those in nine point eight. Now there were eight covers for Deviate Number One. Mm -hmm. um, the cover A, and then the Seven Deadly Sins. So this is Pride, um, the Deadly Sin Pride um, on this one. But there's there's one for each of the seven deadly sins. And so I think they were probably all ordered in relatively equal quantities. There was a Campbell, there was mm -hmm. a Jim Lee. There's some big artists who did, who did these covers. So, um, um, you know, I don't know how you want to divide up how many are out there, but probably roughly one eighth of the total print run. And I think the print run on this thing was probably 90,000. I think I want to say it was. Hey, um, can, can, can you imagine like uh, Dave Stevens? You fucking ruined it. You ruined the cover, Adam. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I'm just kidding. You know, people, you know, he, you know, it's, Adam so Hughes was a huge disciple of Stevens, mm -hmm. right? I mean, yeah. modeled a lot of his, his early work looked very, very close to Stevens in kind of in the same way, like early Lobos looks a lot like Hughes, but, um, but yeah, he, you know, big inspiration for him. Um, and, uh, yeah, this is. Yeah, if it was a collab cover, you know Steven started it, and then Adams finished. Yeah. Adams finished, finished it. Yeah. I would assume, yeah. but yeah, it makes I mean, sense. I mean, Hugh, like I said, Hughes did the reflection, Stevens did the rest. Yeah, an awesome book. A good one to have. A good one to have, given the two artists who work together mm -hmm. on it, and probably under. I mean, given what's going on with Stevens right now, probably honestly undervalued a little bit. Mm -hmm. but we'll see. Yeah. All right. Madman Comics number four. Um, this is a Mike Allred cover, which you probably might may not have guessed. I wouldn't have. I, when I look at this, I don't think of Allred immediately. Um, uh, a nine eight sold for one hundred and eighty uh, early this year. Only twenty four. On the census, eighteen and nine point eight. You may be asking yourself, why are we talking about this book? Well, if you go to the back cover, you will see kind of an obscure Dave Stevens. Wow. Mm -hmm. So something to keep an eye on. I think this one falls through the cracks quite a bit. Oh, Slide geez. it backwards for me, please. <laughs> I mean, sometimes they do it where you can put the back cover in the front. Left. Yeah, you can request that. You can request that. Oh. Uh oh. Let's see. Let's see what the chat says. Beauty Comics has eight, and there can only be Vaughn has wow, eight. Wow, Beauty Comics gave Vaughn a run for his money wow. tonight. I mean, literally a, a straight draw. Man, I I, I haven't seen right. that happen before. And then depending if Dan SPL might have had a different book than than Beauty, so it could potentially be nine to to eight. I but I know I know Lord of Broken usually keeps track of that, so I think Lord of Brooklyn's had two books out of all 74 of our shows. <laughs> <laughs> I think I remember the show where he I'm first got kidding. one. It was like a big leg. <laughs> I think they're all tough books, man. I'm just kidding. It, yeah. All right. I believe that is it. All right. A good show, man. Good books. Uh, 
Mr. Cool is saying he has the tech in, so I don't know if that's nine. I don't know. Someone could probably review the chat in the, when I was throwing up the scores to see if anyone. I think the chat might have beat Vaughn tonight. I mean, this is I, this is. I, yeah, this Vaughn, what been... the hell's going on here? I want to <laughs> recount. <laughs> <laughs> no more. <laughs> Don't be jealous. <laughs> I'm just quick kidding, show. Bro. I, quick you know, show. It, yeah, I, I took a week off, so you know I, my timing is not quite there anymore. Uh, that's what happens. We're 50 minutes in. We usually go, you know, we usually go 60, but uh, yeah, yeah. We, we spoke a little too fast tonight. So we're we're gonna uh, give that time back to you. Yeah, we're gonna give it. I always love going to meetings, and they always say we're gonna give that time back to you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we we could stretch out our outro for like 10 minutes to make it an hour so <laughs> let me introduce all the other shows that are on this channel really oh, no. really slow so friday Ooh. nights are nearing nirvana saturday is saturday morning toy box monday is cover lovers tuesday is the show that started this channel comic book women and on wednesday is movies and shows and then you're back here with us on thursday so big shout out to our sponsors again so make sure to check out cover price you can use the code nirvana 14 for a 30-day unlimited membership for only 99 cents uh, make sure to check out bird city comics you can use the code nirvana for 10 percent discount and make sure you're liking subscribing to all the videos on this channel so and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our uh whenever we go live did you guys see they're selling blue milk? I did Star see Wars? that. So I so I still have like um Starbucks managers like uh phone numbers saved to my phone. So I sent them a text like I'm like, "Hey, your store needs to start sell, uh, get this blue milk and like have That's going to be a uh, thing, dude. And then have blue blue lots or blue lattes, you know, from a galaxy far far away, bro. I mean, if they did a unicorn frappuccino, it wouldn't surprise me if they did some sort of like blue milk like frappuccino or something like Uncle that Owen. <laughs> or something like where you can just get it at the disney park only or something like that you know no it's a true moo that, that's making it so it it must be legit because <laughs> <laughs> you know i totally like have always drank true moo milk before right <laughs> <laughs> hasn't everyone <laughs> It's a real cow, damn it. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard of that cow company. Or True milk no. company. I mean, you work at a grocery store. Do you go to the store and buy True Moo? Hey, man, like something like that. Like, I, I'll i get a hold of the vendor and it's like, let me have everything you have. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> it's like, I want the cow that produces this blue milk. Mm -hmm. I want to see that blue cow. <laughs> are they adding flavor to it man i don't man a buddy of mine sent it to me and i'm just like mm. like <laughs> but you know like you know how people collect shit i can't imagine someone just keeping that in <laughs> i gotta go buy a special refrigerator <laughs> to keep my blue milk in <laughs> right no that does not need to happen. <laughs> that will ensure I get no pussy. <laughs> it's one percent. You milk. want some blue milk? I got some blue milk for you. <laughs> it's one percent, so it's half water anyway. So it's not going to stay blue over the year. <laughs> I can't believe. It. Okay. Big, anyway. big Dairy's gonna ch come chasing after us now. And this video is like no longer gonna become like monetized. Pouring blue milk all over yourself. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I can't wait for the internet to get the a whole hey, blue milk. Hey, you wanted to stretch this out to sixty minutes? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Before we um, care. Yeah, but anyways, uh, so do y'all have any shows coming up? Uh, on Mercenauts channel. I just did a comic book haul yesterday. I got uh, a notification for that. Put that out. Uh, that's where you got the uh, Avengers versus X-Men book from. Nice. And uh, Sunday, it 
it will be hot book alert live uh will you be joining me ben? i will be there i got i got no conflicts right on nice so we're gonna be... i was on a flight i tried to get on i could not connect to their damn wi-fi on that flight um ah. i was gonna try to do it from uh thirty-five thousand feet in the air but uh <laughs> the tech gods were not with me on that one so i hear you that would have been that would have been very interesting it would have been a mess i'm glad I, i'm glad it didn't work because it would have been lagging like fucking crazy so it well i can do a thumbs up i think it pops up nope the heart does i know that i know that works boom all right. Oh wow! Look at that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, did I just see something? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You want to see like hearts. my heart's like boom? What's oh, up? F- <laughs> That's awesome, dude. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, <laughs> Joe and I will be on the hot ten tomorrow night yeah. on on the house of state. <laughs> oh, it didn't work for you? No, uh, I have a Mac. I got a Mac. What's I got going a Mac on here? here. Let me see. Yeah, when, when, when did you upgrade it? Yeah, it's like the reactions thing. I'm not it's on the latest fan, operating dude. system. Uh, I've got a Samsung. It's just kind so, of freaking. Yeah. Damn it! So if you're running, uh, what is it called? Sonoma, you should be able to do Fuck. it. <laughs> right, Carter? Fuck, come on! It's like trying to... Trying try to open up the matrix and the transformers, <laughs> like open. Yeah. Where is it? Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> How are you guys? All right. So, um, and then I'll see if I can make it to uh, Beyond Wednesday's um, Modern Comic Mayhem. I'm I'm sure there's a lot of comic book drama coming up. Uh, I forgot exactly what happened. If not, but... we'll start something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's usually what happens, right? Mm-hmm. We'll start a pot. All right. If there ain't but... no drama, we'll start it. <laughs> All right. Y'all have a great weekend. Have a good Friday. Take it easy. And we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>